From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to Bayou Wild TV. I'm Don Dubuque along with Martha Spencer. We're at Morton's Seafood Restaurant and Bar on the banks of the Chifuncta River in Madisonville where we invite you to come out and see us on Mondays when we're out here taping. Martha, we've got a very exciting show and one of the guys that you really admire, Larry Hooper from Venice. That's right. Larry Hooper is actually from Connecticut, my home state. Oh. He moved to Venice 14 years ago and that doesn't sound so exciting except for the fact that he is a 76-year-old charter guide down there. Started as his third career, he has a great story to tell. He is admired by many down there and just a really beloved man in Venice, always willing to help other people and a great fisherman too. So we're gonna share his story. I'm only 76 years old and my goal is to be fishing at 100 years old. So many characters along Louisiana's coast. We're gonna introduce you to another one, the Bayou woman, Wendy Billiard. What a job she has done is becoming, like yourself, kind of an ambassador for women in the outdoors, running all kinds of special trips. She does some writing, a blog, and even hosts a radio program with us. I didn't start out with fishing charters, although I love to fish. I wanted to do um, educational eco-tours, wetland tours to just show people what's going on here with coastal uh, land loss and coastal restoration. And we head back out to White Oak Plantation, visit our friend Chef John Fulce. He makes a delicious mouth-watering oyster pan roast. Don and him cook it up for you. You'll get the recipe all coming up. Nice and nice, got that good oyster flavor. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna sacrifice half of those oysters and half of that crab meat in here. Just dump about half of those oysters in. In fact, I'll help you out there. That's good enough right there. And of course, these are just shucked last night. Well, you said uh, sacrifice. You're not getting rid of this. Oh, no, no. We're okay. just going okay. to just cook these to sacrifice it to flavor. We always keep half of it for the finished dish. So. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry Seafood Boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana Fish Fry brand Seafood Boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. If you ever thought that there was an expiration date for being a professional charter captain, then you haven't met Captain Larry Hooper. I started fishing as a boy when I was four years old in the pond and back. We had drop lines and I learned that if I threw a drop line out there, a hand line out there, and I pulled it fast enough, a pickerel would chase it and I could catch a pickerel. So I used to throw it out there and just pull it fast hand over hand 
and I was catching pickles. Now 76 years old, he began his third career 14 years ago, learning to fish Venice waters. What may even be more impressive is his 30-year history with the Volunteer Fire Department in Connecticut. Come on. There you go, beautiful color on this one too. Oh yeah, he swallowed it. Finally, the tide is starting to move, and the big ones are coming out of the weeds, and we caught two of these in a row. Martha caught the first one, Joe got the second one. Life is good. But how does a then 62-year-old Yankee retiree become a longtime charter guide in Cajun country? Larry Hooper, more commonly known in Venice as Hoop, fell in love with the people in Louisiana, and especially the fishing. That's that they have their, uh, their charters, their Spanish mackerel and all this stuff. Montauk has its uh, striped bass and its fluke and uh, the offshore stuff, but uh, there is no better fishing than here. Pretty girl, pretty girl. Come on, honey. I might even kiss you and throw you back. How pretty it is. Hoop recently lost his beloved wife to cancer. He stays busy these days, not only fishing, but helping others whenever he can. I spend my time taking care of my property and helping other people out. Uh, I'm constantly helping people. That's probably why so many like me down here. <laughs> I would if, say if, that if you ask, If you ask for anything, I could probably get it or help you out. He's the greatest. He is one of the original. He is one of the original top fishermen down here. He has taught half of these young guys what they're doing. He has always got the greatest attitude and comes in with fish every time. And all his customers always guarantee to come back. He would do anything he could for you, really. You could call Hoop in the middle of the night and he'll be there or get somebody there for you. You know, I mean, he's just a nice dude, man. Old school man, great guy. At 76, Hoop has no intentions of slowing down anytime soon. I'm only 76 years old, and my goal is to be fishing at 100 years old. <laughs> and hopefully, I will have plenty of ability to do it. Most people my age have issues if they make it that far. You know, Larry to me kind of feels like family. We come from the same place, we can talk about our old locations, but we also both feel at home in Louisiana. If you ever get a chance to go fish with our Freedom Charters, you will definitely have a good time. Coming up next, we head down to the bayou with the bayou woman, Wendy Billiat. You may have seen her in a previous episode out at the Pickets with Captain Rob DuPont. Coming up next, we take you to meet the bayou woman. It never gets old for me, never ever, because we always see something new, we always see something different, and you know, after doing this for 14 years, I can tell you it's, it's just as fun as it was when I first started. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Ross's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. If you spend a day along the bayous of South Louisiana, you're bound to run into a myriad of people who make their living in the outdoors. And if you're in the Bayou du Large area, one Louisianian who has dedicated her life to the outdoors is Wendy Billiard. 
Wendy is a writer, licensed charter captain, citizen scientist, tour guide, radio talk show host, and advocate of all things Louisiana. This diverse career has dubbed her with the title, The Bayou Woman. My thing is the more people who know about this area and come here, and whether it's to take a boat ride, whether it's to do a birding trip, or whether it's to hire a charter guide, they just really don't know what we have here, the beauty and the value and all the things that are here that are worth saving that we will lose if we you know, don't do coastal restoration and don't do it rapidly. Many would believe with a name like Bayou Woman, Wendy was born and raised in the marsh, but in fact, she's actually a South Louisiana transplant. My work in the Gulf of Mexico started in 1978. So when I would go from the Dock and Dulac out to the Gulf of Mexico, I could see the beauty. Now, I'm not from here. I'm from Bossier City. I'm from North Louisiana. But once I moved down here and went to work here, I stayed here and I never looked back. Wendy spent her early career working on crew boats. It was then that she developed a passion for Bayou life. I've had my license since 2004, so about 14 years. And I didn't start out with fishing charters, although I love to fish. I wanted to do um, educational eco tours, wetland tours, to just show people what's going on here with coastal uh, land loss and coastal restoration. I had my own boat since I was 19, so I had plenty of experience on the water. And that would enable me to take people out for hire to do tours and just show them what's here and why it's worth saving. That passion developed into an opportunity to teach others how to fish the South Louisiana marshes. I started as a little girl with my father, freshwater fishing, and my mother in Toledo Bend. Um, and I think that that's something that's lacking now is starting our children little. I have four sons, three of whom are outdoorsmen, and their daddy doesn't hunt or fish, so it was all me. So um, it was either take them or find someone to take them, and that's just what we have to do. Wendy recalls some of her most memorable moments are when, when kids were on the boat. Todd was falling hard, and I told him, the tip of your rod is going to twitch, it's going to twitch, and when it does, dirt back as hard as you can, and he did. And that boy caught a black drum, and he landed it himself. It was as tall as he was. Everybody was happy, including me. Throughout her years working in the outdoors, Wendy realized the rapid change in South Louisiana's coast. As she witnessed these changes, it inspired her to write children's books to bring awareness to others. Writing a children's picture book was one way that I could educate all age groups. Now, a grandparent could read it to a grandchild, parent to a child, an older child to a little child. So it reaches everybody. And that is really how I started writing was I wrote that manuscript in 2004. And it was published in early 2015. So I like to say it's a pre-Katrina book and the part I hate to say is in the very end it's about an otter she's telling about 30 years of wetland loss which was me that she's seen over 30 years and in the end she packs up her little family and she moves up the bayou and the very last question is what will you do well it was sort of prophetic because six months later Katrina was here so I'm not happy about that um, but that was the beginning was getting that story out about 30 years of wetland loss and how it came about, so what some of the causes were, in a way that children could understand. In the Brackish Marsh here in Lower Terrebonne Parish, areas like this, if you can see behind me, there is an oak tree ridge that was once beautiful and thriving. But due to saltwater intrusion, those oak trees are long gone, and they're just dark black skeletons standing out there now. This whole area was once fresh and now it's a brackish marsh. It's adapted over time and it's a beautiful brackish marsh where once it was a freshwater marsh. An active member of the Louisiana Outdoor Writers Association, Wendy uses several media to reach and educate audiences of the Bayou lifestyle she's grown to love, including regularly hosting Hunt Fish Talk on WWL FM HD Radio. She also authors the online space BayouWoman.com. That's the way that I recharge, is just being on the water. So I'm inspired by everything I see out there. I do continue my blog, um, and then I write for outdoor magazines, and I write for Country Roads Magazine out of Baton Rouge. And really anybody that will ask if it's something I think I can do justice to, I'll at least give it a try. But perhaps the best way to educate people of Louisiana's rich ecosystem is by exposing them to everything the bayou has to offer. 
I've had people on my boat from all over the world. I've had people from England and France and Germany and most recently Austria. And I think what amazes them is that you don't have to go very far to see wildlife, whether it be wading birds, but, but mainly alligators. People are really intrigued with seeing alligators. You know, they have this mindset about how South Louisiana is and how Cajuns are, but when they come, they are really in awe of not just the things that they see, but the things that they experience. It never gets old for me. Never, ever, because we always see something new, we always see something different, and you know, after doing this for 14 years, I can tell you it's, it's just as fun as it was when I first started. The Bayou woman knows that the most important part of preserving Louisiana's heritage and culture starts at a young age. I'm concerned about several things. I'm concerned about the culture and the heritage that we have here that is directly connected to living and working and recreating in these wetlands. The health of these wetlands is essential. And so as these wetlands erode away, so goes the culture and the way of life. But I think putting that in the back of my mind and keeping it there, that as stewards of the outdoors, that we have to do everything we can to take those kids out, even if it's just, you know, on a drive through even if it's just a ride through even if it's just to go eat at a restaurant that looks over the coast. Anything, because you never know in a child's mind what might spark them to say, I want to know more. You know, Papa, can we go out in a boat? Granny, can we go out on a boat? Just don't call me Granny. Yes, we can go, absolutely. And I have one little granddaughter. I have another one on the way. And they're at least going to be exposed to the outdoors, whether or not they choose to follow that. But I'll do everything I can. If you hunt or fish, you really need to check out 20echo.com. It's an app that you can take on the water or on the hunt. It logs all the information. It's got the date, the GPS location, tons of information to log your catch or kill. It's a great thing to have. Check it out at 20echo.com and you'll see it more on Bayou Wild TV. Coming up next on Bayou Wild, Chef John Fultz tells us how to prepare oyster pan roast. John, you won't want to miss it. No, indeed. <laughs> Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. And welcome to the kitchen of Chef John Foltz here at White Oak Plantation in Baton Rouge. Chef, we got another mouth-watering <laughs> recipe today. What are we going to be cooking? Man, I love to hear when somebody tells me, Don Dubuque's coming to White Oak. Boy, I love a, to hear it, too. <laughs> that's a good day. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you're an oyster lover, right? Oh, huh? am I? From way I, back. You, you know, one of the things that I think is so intriguing about Louisiana is that we have such a wide scope of seafood, as you know better than anybody. Uh, that people are constantly looking to share their recipes of what they're doing with redfish or what they're doing with speckled trout or whatever, oysters included. And uh, I'm, I'm always searching myself for these kind of great recipes. So knowing Louisiana was such a good uh, oyster culture, I started to look at some of the early recipes and I found one that was uh, called oyster pan roast. There was a great competition between an African-American chef at the uh, Oyster House up in uh, New York, Grand Central Station, which is a very famous oyster house. They have about 30 different varieties of oysters. And a chef at the old Roosevelt Hotel. And they got in a battle about who did the best oysters. So I thought I'd show you a little bit about the oyster. Has it ever been roast. decided who came up with it first? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I never met the guy in New York, but I know the guy in New Orleans beat his butt. There's no <laughs> doubt about <laughs> oh, that. We knew right? that. We knew that. <laughs> now, I have, a, I have some Bayou Ferran oysters here. I, that, that, mm -hmm. You know, that area of the Gulf is so fantastic. And we do a lot of oysters at, uh, at Revolution. So I'm starting off in this black, uh, black iron skillet, and I'm going to put butter in here. And when the butter hits this skillet, uh, you know, you're going to get a nice browning, which is, uh, which is important uh, in the oyster pan roast. Now, why they call it the pan roast is, I guess, just because they're doing it over a nice hot open fire. You're browning your butter first, 
and nothing is better flavored in a dish than burned or brown butter. You know that, right? Huh? So we're gonna have a little bit of, uh, of this in here. And then of course we have the seasonings I'm gonna put in. And the seasonings, of, of course in Louisiana we can put anything we want, but a little bay leaf, a little green onion. We wanna stay competitive with the New York guy because we know we can do it better with the quality <laughs> of the oysters. A little shallots, a little garlic, a little green onions, a little onions are going in there as well. Saute that around for just a, a second. And you see how that brown butter is starting to uh, burn noir, they call this, burn noisette, some people call it. But you can see how beautiful that butter is browning. Now, uh, now we're gonna put in a little bit flour. You see that flour right in front? Just kind of dust about half of it. And then we're gonna make a little light brown, a little light roux. We're not gonna make, our, that's plenty right there. And I'm gonna just swirl that around a little bit. And you see how it's thickening up nicely? What's your favorite oyster recipe, do you? I think we're working on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, there's so many good ones, but uh, I think the fire roasted oysters is the big deal right now. Well, let's anyway. not forget just the old oyster on a half shell with some lemon and hot oh sauce. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Oh, no, absolutely. Ooh. Ice cold, ice cold. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I really like about my uh, restaurant in Jackson, my uh, seafood revolution. We have about eight or nine different oysters on that menu every single night. So I don't want to brown it too much. I want you to put a little bit of that red paprika in here, about half of it, because the oyster pan roast is always a reddish uh, color. So you want to put that paprika in there to give it that color. Some people think it's tomato, but it's not. It's just that fire roasted. Uh, a little bit of that oyster liquid. You see it right there? You can pour it all in there. You can pour it all in. So this is where we're going to make our sauce. So that roux is going to thicken beautifully. Uh, we're gonna move that around nicely. Now it's got that good oyster flavor. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna sacrifice half of those oysters and half of that crab meat in here. Just dump about half of those oysters in. In fact, I'll help you out there. That's good enough right there. And of course, these are just shucked last night. Now you said uh, sacrifice. You're not getting rid no. of this. Oh, no, no, okay. we're, just gonna, okay. we're just gonna just cook these to sacrifice it to flavor. We always keep half of it for the finished dish. So you already know this is gonna be good, huh? Oysters mm -hmm. and lump crab. Ooh, what can you go wrong? <laughs> So you see that beautiful orange color? Now, Don, give me about half of that cream you have right there in that little cream pitcher. Just dump it on in there like that. That's about right. I'll swirl that around. And give me the rest of that paprika, so I want that nice rusty color. Imagine the flavor in here now with that beautiful lump crab meat and that gorgeous, uh, uh, that gorgeous uh, uh, oyster liquid. So we're just gonna continue to cook this, and when we come back, we're gonna show you how we finish it up, okay? Stay tuned, we'll be right back with Oyster Pan Roast with Chef John Foltz. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. 50 years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Welcome back to White Oak Plantation, a kitchen of John Foltz. And John, we've got a pan oyster roast going on. Tell us a little bit about how we got to this point. Well, you know, we've, uh, we went ahead and put a little butter and then our normal seasonings, onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic. Then into that, we put a little, uh, a little oyster liquid. And you can get oyster liquid either out of the gallon or when you shug the oyster, just make sure you put the liquid in another little pan. But the oysters are 50% liquid anyway, so they're gonna fill up the pot. And then, of course, we added a little of our uh, crab meat to it because the crab is gonna give it a lot of great flavor and you can eliminate the crab if you don't wanna uh, put it in. A little paprika and cream went into it. Now we put in a little salt and pepper, 
a little garlic. You can put a couple pinches of that parsley right there if you don't mind. And I'm going to put a little Worcestershire sauce, which is always good. Could you use shrimp or crawfish instead of oh, the crab? Oh, my God, sure you can. Any shellfish. And I think you're just kind of piling on, because in Louisiana, we like to pile on. So mm. I think the crab meat went in just to try to beat the guy in New York, because he wasn't going <laughs> to have that beat. jumbo He's lunch. giving up. We just got a text message. He's done. <laughs> He's done. He gives up. So, Don, if you pick up that little platter right there, and, uh, and, I'll, and look at here, guys. Now, this is a Ooh. dish that you can put in the oven with a little Parmesan cheese on top of it if you want to make a, like a gratin. Or you can go ahead and put it uh, just like this out near the barbecue pit when uh, folks are waiting for the, that red fish to come off of the grill or whatever. And you serve it with a little croutons. And down you can put a little sprinkle of that beautiful green parsley and some cheese on top of it. Oh, look how nice that is. It's a beautiful dish. It's a dish with unbelievable flavor. And it's a unique and uh, historic dish with two chefs trying to decide for, that, for themselves who had the best oyster dish. And you know what? The guy in New York was uh, behind, no the eight, chance. behind the eight ball from the beginning. We declare it the winner. <laughs> right here from the kitchen of John Foltz, White Oak Plantation. Oyster Pan Roast. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. So this Almaco Jack was swimming about four hours ago. We caught it, cleaned it, brought it to see Moran's restaurant, and they cooked it way better than I ever could. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, Pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Coming up next week on Bayou Wild, we head down to Port Fouchon, Louisiana, where we meet an awesome group of guys on a fishing team called Gone Pecan. You'll learn what that means and take you out fishing with them coming up next week. They know who we are. You know, they, they know who's on the boat. They know who we are. So not to say we're the best or, you know, we by far the best. We don't do anything better than anyone else, but we have fun. You know, it's all family. We just, we just have fun with it. And reminder, always follow us on social media. We post a lot of great updates on our Facebook page. Our YouTube channel has chock full of videos, extras, extended features, and all of our full length episodes are there if you don't get Cox Sports uh, TV. You can also check us out on Instagram and Facebook as well. And come see us here at Morton's. We tape on Mondays. Call it and find out what days we'll be here. And don't forget on Saturday's radio show, 5 to 7, on the Outdoors with Don Dubuque Radio Network. We'll see you next week with another edition of Bayou Wild.